Hello again, welcome to Force Edu. In continuation of our series on total quality management, we present to you the final episode of the series. Our topic for today's video is the fundamentals of Six Sigma. The concept of Six Sigma was developed by Bill Smith of Motorola in 1987 in order to measure defects and improve overall quality. It is based upon the works of W. Edwards Deming, Walter Schwartz, and Ronald Fisher, among many other scientists. Such was the impact of Six Sigma that it helped Motorola to be the first company to receive the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award in the year 1988, just a year after initiating the Six Sigma concept. Looking at the success of Six Sigma at Motorola, a number of other companies, such as General Electric, Dow Chemical, DuPont, Honeywell, Whirlpool adopted Six Sigma. Even though the credit of inventing Six Sigma goes to Motorola, General Electric under Jack Welch has made it popular, and proved it to be a management strategy. We'll start by understanding what is Six Sigma. Six Sigma is a disciplined, statistical-based, data-driven approach, and continuous improvement methodology for eliminating defects in a product, process, or service. The greatest achievement of it was to shift the focus from after-the-fact measurements of defects, to controlling the processes in order to minimize those defects. Sigma is denoted by the Greek letter sigma representing the standard deviation of a population and it shows the variation of a set of values with respect to the mean. Smaller the deviation, closer the points are to the mean and vice versa. Why only six sigma? Let us look at its reason. The name Six Sigma is derived from the bell curve used in statistics, where one sigma represents one standard deviation away from the mean. The more the number of standard deviations between process average and acceptable process limits fits, the less likely that the process performs beyond the acceptable process limits, thereby decreasing the chances of causing a defect. This is the reason why a Six Sigma process performs better than one sigma, two sigma, three sigma, four sigma, five sigma processes. Obviously, seven or more sigma processes are even better than a six sigma, but the cost to achieve it is way more. LSL and USL stand for lower specification limit and upper specification limit respectively. Specification limits are derived from the customer requirements, and they specify the minimum and maximum acceptable limits of a process. In this figure, the red curve indicates a two sigma level of performance where we observe that its peak is very low, fewer outputs are around the desired average, and the variation is from extreme left to extreme right of the figure. If the process improves from two sigma to three sigma green curve, you will observe that the process variation reduces and the process has a larger peak, more outputs are around the desired average, but a different average than red curve. As the process performance increases from 3 sigma to 6 sigma blue curve, the process becomes centered between the upper and lower specification limits and does not have much variation. Here, with blue curve the majority of process outputs are around the desired average. This is why it is good and it causes fewer defects beyond the lower and upper specification limits. Six Sigma can have three different meanings. As a statistical tool, it focuses on producing 3.4 defects per million opportunities. As a process, it focuses on DMAIC and DMADV approaches to achieve improvement to existing and new processes. And, as a philosophy, based on the theory that reduction in defects is a better approach to lower costs and increase customer loyalty, it realizes the fact that defects are expensive. To gain a competitive edge, developing a high-quality product at the right cost is essential for customer satisfaction and profitability. Variations limit process performance. Now, let us look at the methods. DMAIC and DMADV are two of the most common Six Sigma methodologies in use today. DMAIC involves define, measure, analyze, improve, and control phases whereas DMADV involves define, measure, analyze, design, and verify phases. DMAIC is used on a product or process that already exists but is no longer meeting customer needs and or specifications. DMADV is associated with new services and product designs, it may not always work with existing products and processes. When there is no existing product, DMADV can be implemented to design the product or process. In this video we will look into the DMAIC methodology of Six Sigma. And, to understand it better we will consider an example for the same. We have Mr. Smith with us. 
He had been assigned to implement Six Sigma in Tiresome Tires, a tire manufacturing company. Now, let's look at the steps followed by Mr. Smith to successfully implement Six Sigma. To start off, he focused on improvements in the rubber extrusion process, particularly the mixing, preparation and construction departments. The mixing department received raw materials that were transformed into compound sheets that were then used in the preparation department on seven extrusion lines, which focus on the tread and sidewall extrusion. The ultimate customer for the extrusion process was the construction department. The amount of material generated in the process, which was later reused for other purposes, was one of the indicators for him on how efficient the operation was running. The focus was to limit the amount of extra material generated during the tread and sidewall extrusion process, called work off. Once he was set on the focus of the project and the research, he moved forward to implement the DMAIC cycle. Now let's look at each of the phases in the DMAIC cycle. Firstly, we have the defined phase. To accurately define the problem areas in the process, Mr. Smith drew up a project charter that identifies problems, establishes objectives and defines the scope of the project, including the employee teams involved. A project charter also, establishes the business case for how the project will impact overall organizational strategy. Clearly measures the impact on the business of the current problem and measures the gap between where things are and the desired state. Creates a clear scope for the project with identification of the areas where teams will focus to prevent scope creep moving into areas outside the defined perimeter of the project. To create the charter, the company used a Gantt chart, a horizontal chart that maps out a product schedule. They also used a SIPOC diagram to plot the extrusion process in greater detail. SIPOC stands for Supplier, Inputs, Process, Outputs and Customer. A SIPOC is a way to see an entire process in one graph and see the relationship between inputs and suppliers and the output for customers. Once the define phase was completed, he went on to the measure phase. In measure phase, the team members measure the current process or performance. Identify the sources for making the data available identifying units of measurement, measurement scale like nominal, ordinal, ratio and interval. Develop data collection plan DCP. Describe the problem on the basis of data collected involving the usage of graphical tools like quality controls. To comprehend the present condition of the expulsion procedure, Mr. Smith made a data collection plan. This included estimating the measure of dismissed material during the expulsion procedure. Information was gathered for 30 weeks, with 10 three-hour preliminaries directed every week. After this time of estimation, the organization could decide the level of unused work-off material created in the track and sidewall expulsion forms. He then proceeded to the analyze phase. With the measure of information gathered, the concentrate at that point went to discover the main drivers of the imperfections in the process that caused variations in the quantity of material squandered. Mr. Smith utilized the Ishikawa graph to discover the circumstances and logical results, connection between different exercises and contributions to the procedure, and the issue of producing unused material. He at that point utilized a Pareto outline to organize which potential causes appeared to have the most negative effect. He found that one machine in the sidewall expulsion process was not proceeding just like the others, prompting a noteworthy increment in additional material. In the track expulsion process, he found that the strategy for taking care of the machines was making issues with machine stoppage and sticking. Having identified these causes, he then moved on to the improve phase. In the improve phase, the team brainstorms solutions, pilots process changes, implements solutions and lastly, collects data to confirm there is measurable improvement. A structured improvement effort can lead to innovative and elegant solutions that improve the baseline measure and, ultimately, the customer experience. Mr. Smith made a list of all the problems and root causes, then the subsequent action taken to improve these issues. These include changes to the machinery itself and changes in the methods used by employees to feed material into the machine. Once the improvements were incorporated, it was time for moving to the control phase. The control phase ensures the solution is properly implemented, documented, measured and maintained. It involves Implementing the actual changes, whether they be physical, behavioral or both, rewriting procedures and work instructions, retraining staff on new procedures, putting systems in place to measure and monitor the new process, such as control charts, and writing an action plan. 
In this phase, data was collected on the changes in the process and they were very significant. The company reduced the amount of work off material by 4 tons per day. After factoring in the cost of improvements to the machinery, the positive impact to the company's bottom line was $160,000 per year. And, this is how Mr. Smith managed to implement Six Sigma successfully thereby reducing excess materials significantly. Throughout its history and evolution, Six Sigma has turned into a business-driven, multi-dimensional structured approach to reinforce business strategies into various aspects such as, improving processes, lowering defects, reducing process variability, reducing costs, increasing customer satisfaction, increasing profit. That's it for today's video. Hope you liked it. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And, press the bell icon to get notifications for our upcoming videos. Also, if you have any suggestions, kindly drop them in our comments section. Bye, see you soon.